us off. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jack Deby. I'm the curriculum director for the Avon Lake City Schools. And I'd like to welcome you to our third uh, back to school forum. You can also see on the screen with me, our superintendent, Mr. Bob Scott, and our business manager, Mr. Tom Baroni. I'm going to turn the meeting over to Mr. Scott. And then after his introduction, I'll go through and explain what we'll be doing this evening and the process for um, asking questions when we get to that portion of the evening. So welcome everyone and Mr. Scott, it's all yours. Thank you, Jack. And, and I just want to welcome everybody tonight. This is, this is our third Zoom meeting. Uh, uh, I really appreciate it. Everybody in the district appreciates uh, people attending these and giving us their input. It really helps in us putting this plan together. I also want to thank everybody for their patience. Uh, you know, we have been doing this for months on end. And at this point, I really want to say thank you to Jack Deby, who does not get enough appreciation for everything that he has been doing for this process. Uh, it seems like it's been endless since March, and he's done a great job. So, Jack, you know, thank you. I know if the thank parents you. could applaud, they would. But, you know, you've done a great job. Uh, but I really we will hand it back to Jack so he can go through the plan and we can get some questions asked. Uh, but it, it's been quite a project and, and really the reason it's been a project is because of the constant change and uh, that is going to be a piece that we're going to have to still deal with over the next several months because what we've learned since March is uh, the really thing that we have that is certain is it's going to change either tomorrow next week or in a month and, and we're preparing for that so you know we're ready to go we've got a good solid plan in place we've got questions and and we've got we hope we get more questions from the public that can help us refine our plan. And with that, Jack, it's back to you. Okay, and I'd also like to let everyone know we are also live on YouTube at our um, ALCast YouTube. And I see we already have some people watching us on live on YouTube in addition to the people on Zoom. And what we're going to be doing this evening is I have a brief presentation that has a lot of information related to a lot of the questions we've been fielding since the plan came out. And then after the um, presentation, I'll open it up for questions. And I'd ask you to hold off on submitting questions until we get to that portion of the program, because some of your questions may already be answered in the beginning presentation. And I'll talk about how to submit questions to me as soon as we get to the part where we open the questions up. Okay, and with that, I'm going to be sharing my screen. Let's see. And I have to get that screen up to share it. Jack, do you want me to let people in who are in the waiting room? That would be great. Thank you. You're more than welcome to. Thank you. The admit button just went away for me, Jack. I don't <laughs> really? know why. Yeah, it was there a second ago. There we go. Okay. Let's see. And it's not what we want. We want. All right. Do you see the community forum, Tom, on the screen? No? Okay, hang on one second. Sorry about that. Yeah, the Zoom screen is up. It's still there. Okay, let me go back to unshare screen. Sorry, I have a couple different browsers open trying to have everything at a glance. Uh, let's see where I signed it to Zoom from. Let's see if this works now. Did not. 
Oh yeah, there it is. Okay. All right. Sorry about that delay there, everyone. Time. Okay, thank you. As I said, we're, what we're going to be doing is we'll have an update on our back to school plan, and then we'll have a question and answer session. So the, the key takeaways as we start is everything changes and it's been changing quickly. Um, I know this afternoon, my phone was going off crazy with texts from other um, people across the area that I, I work with. And they're asking if I heard this rumor or that rumor, and we know things keep changing. So our plan is fluid and everything that we're telling you is as of today, knowing that things will probably continue to change between now and the first day of school until um, we begin. Right now, the first day of school is tentatively set for August 31st. That's what the board um, approved, but we know that that is always a possibility of something that could change as well. That'll depend on the conditions at the time. And no matter whether it's the first day of school, the third week of school, the third month of school, the key takeaway is everyone, whether you're doing online or whether you're doing in person, we need to be prepared for the possibility that not only could we start the year um, online, but we could go to online at any point in time during the year. So there may be some back and forth going on and just expect change and have your plan ready to go in terms of situations that might affect your house. We'll talk a little bit about our remote learning option. This is where we've been receiving a lot of our questions. So the remote learning option that we're offering is 100% remote learning option. And the deadline we extended until August 5th at the request of a lot of parents. We hey, will Jack, offer, go ahead. I'm sorry to excuse you. I've got two people in the waiting room and no admit button. I don't want them to stay there. Sorry. Click see, see waiting room and then click admit all. But I just did it for you. Got it. Okay. Um, sorry, let me go back to here. So we will be offering all of our courses and classes online. And students who do online will still be eligible for athletics or extracurricular activities. Uh, Dr. Brad Coco is going to be the director for our online learning program. He will be overseeing the day-to-day -day of the, those students and teachers who are working 100% online. And he'll also be housed at Open Door and be the administrator for the eighth grade team that we're putting at Open Door. And I'll talk a little bit more about that as we go through the presentation. Big question people keep asking me is what will be different between online and in person? So the curriculum and the pacing will be the same whether they're online or in person. Obviously the presentation will be a little different if they're completely online. I know that um, in school we use a lot, of a lot of technology. We have a lot of programs that we use, but their um, curriculum and the pacing will be the same. It's just delivery that will be slightly different. We're working with our teachers through not only in planning in the beginning of the year, but at different points during the year to make sure that the kids and the teachers and everyone is staying on the same pace. At the high school level, we have a few classes that we call singletons. And so on some of those singletons, they only offer one session or one period during the day. Some of those may be offered online only, but we'll still have the kids who are on campus participate them online with somebody supervising them while they're doing that. In the event that we were to have a course that we just simply couldn't offer online that a student requested because maybe they were the only one who requested it and we just didn't have a way to make it work, we would contact that parent and ask them um, if that would change their decision. Would they either like to have their schedule change or would they like to change their decision between remote or online? Um, and we'll have the high school scheduling will be done in the Hopefully within the next couple of weeks, we'll have schedules out to parents and families. So again, I mentioned the deadline to register is August 5th. The commitment period is for the first semester, so through January. And we have that for a lot of different reasons. Number one, this is a huge undertaking for staffing. We are pulling our own Avon Lake teachers who have applied and requested to be 
online to do the online teaching. So as a result, we're putting them um, online and then we're having to look at numbers when we compare the numbers of people online. And I know I get this question asked each time, so I'll tell you, as of a few minutes ago, we had just over 320 signed up to go online. Um, and so that changes how we staff in our buildings, how many sections of uh, courses we offer at the high school in person, how many we offer online, how many third grades we offer at Eastview, how many second grades we offer at Redwood. So once we make these decisions based on staffing, we need people to be able to commit to whether they commit to in person or online. It also aligns with the credit that you receive for high school for courses and some eighth grade courses. We offer credits only at the semester time. So in January and June is when they receive a credit grade. So this will allow them to be with the same teacher and to have a consistency and expectations and um, build the relationship with the teacher and the students, not only at the high school, but at all, all levels. That's not to say that if there was not an extenuating circumstance, we wouldn't make a change. But we will not, what we won't be doing is just offering and saying, if you want to change at any point in time, we'll let you change. What we would do is we would have a meeting with the principal and the guidance counselor and look at the reasons and, and see whether or not um, it's a change that we feel is in the best interest of all parties. So what might a socially distanced physical classroom look like with desks six feet apart? There's some uh, examples there. The top left is a class at Eastview. The top right is a classroom at Redwood. And the bottom center is a classroom that's going to actually be in the cafeteria at Westview. And you'll notice in the Westview one, you'll see the large screen TV on the wall. Um, any of the non-traditional spaces that are being used for classrooms will be equipped with the technology that's needed for instruction. Okay. I wanna share with you our COVID resource guide. This guide is completely, um, is already posted on our website. And I wanna thank Mr. Baroni, feel free to jump in at any time. He and his department worked on putting this together. And I'm not going to actually read through the whole go to uh, here we go go read through the whole guide but I do want to highlight some of the um, key information in here um, at this point in time I think a lot of people are aware of the preventative practices at home and the things that we need kids to do and staff to do at school regard in regards to not spreading the disease been a lot of questions about home and school assessment protocols and we're asking and we need parents and students to be partners with us in this and, and any of the aspects of being able to go back to school. We need everyone to, to work together so that we can stay open, we can reduce the likelihood of illnesses. Anything that we do, any of these protocols, anything we do at school is going to mitigate or lessen the risks of um, contacting illness. It's not going to eliminate it. There will always be risks and in-person school or in-person grocery store or in-person being around friends is always a higher risk than being at home. The, the bottom line is I know a lot of parents have said, what can you do to guarantee that my child won't get sick? And we can't guarantee, we can only tell you what we're doing to help minimize the risks. But anytime that you're around a people, you always have a higher risk than if you're not around people. And I'll, we'll talk a little bit more about assessments later. The other big area related to this that we get lots of questions for has to do with when students or staff members either come down with um, coronavirus or are exposed to somebody who has tested positive. So I'm gonna ad address both of those. If a student comes down with the symptoms, they will be monitored, uh, they'll be immediately removed from the classroom where they're at, 
and they'll be monitored by one of the nurses. And we'll talk a little bit about how we've enhanced our nursing staff and added a lot of support. And they will um, be given the face covering, any other PPE if needed. And then we will notify the parents and ask them to come within 30 minutes and we'll go over all the information with them. They'll be in a well clinic, which will be separate from the regular clinic until a parent or guardian comes. And at that point in time, obviously we'll recommend that they um, get a COVID test. We know that there are a lot of issues with getting COVID tests for kids. Um, typically they don't do them if they don't have symptoms, but I know that um, our school nurse, um, Becky Bush just emailed me a couple hours ago. They're still working with the County Health Department and I believe they're meeting again tomorrow. Um, they're the, across the county, this is a level of concern of how we get kids tested who um, we believe have the symptoms and how we're going to handle that. So they are still working with the health department on that. And I know there's a issue with supply and demand in Ohio in terms of, of testing. Frequently what the doctors tell people is that if you have the symptoms while you're waiting a test or while you're waiting results, you need to treat it as if you do have that. If we have confirmed cases with either a staff or a student, we will work with Lorain County Public Health and they are the ones who determined how we go about with the quarantining. We don't make the determination who is quarantined. They come in and they will um, talk with the, the people involved, find out who is in close contact with the affected person, which they consider 10 or more minutes um, within six feet of the individual who tested positive. It's all done on a case by case basis. And we follow, we'll follow HIPAA laws. We won't be able to identify individual names or people who have tested positive, but we will send notifications where appropriate if students in a class have come in contact with someone. Um, but one case does not necessarily shut down a classroom or shut down a school. You know, Jack, it doesn't necessarily even send the kids that are sitting around that student into quarantine. And, you know, as we're talking to David Cobell, the, the commissioner of the health department, you know, the, you know, as he's talking, as long as we're distancing, masks are on, we're doing the things we need to be doing, we're tracking. So when they come in, we can tell who's what kids are where, they'll make that decision. And, you know, one of the big questions earlier was, oh, if the teacher tests positive, the whole class is going to have to be quarantined. And what David said is if the teacher has a mask on, has a shield on, is distanced from the kids and stays that way, you know, even though they'll make that decision, most likely they're not going to quarantine the class, you know, because if everything's been done. So, you know, that is one of the reasons why we need to make sure that all of those mitigating factors we can do as often as we possibly can to make sure, and we're going to have kids get sick. And the thing is, is, they might not necessarily have COVID and we've got to work with that to make sure every time somebody comes down to the office or every time a, a parent, which we need the parents to keep their kids home if they're sick, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to have, they have COVID and we're going to have to work with that with everybody to make sure that, that, that we don't jump to that conclusion all the time and everybody gets upset. It's going to be a process and we're going to work together on it. Thanks, Mr. Scott. Um, the transportation department, the transportation department has set up a lot of safety procedures. Um, number one, we've reduced the bus um, eligibility zone to a mile or further. And the reason is, is that we are limited to one student per seat unless they are siblings and then two can sit together. So that cha changes a 72 passenger bus to a 24 passenger bus right off the bat. The drivers will wear a mask or a face shield as students are on the bus. Um, students will sanitize when they get on the bus. The buses will be loaded from the back to the front. So there's minimal kids passing each other in the aisles and um, buses will be disinfected in between the runs. And again, there could be changes related to um, ridership or other protocols. The, Bus route will be posted to the website by August 21st. So that's, um, you know, a good 10 days before school starts. 
you know, Jack, and as we've talked about in the other meetings, that transportation to school and entering the school is where we're going to need a lot of help from parents. You know, we know because of the protocols that busing is going to be different. Uh, and if we have more walkers, we have bike riders, we have uh, more people, car, more kids that are car riders coming in, of course, that's going to change how we enter the school. And, you know, you'll show this later on, but you know, part of the piece of what we're doing is in order to keep that social distancing, we're gonna have different entrances for different kids as so we come in the building. It's something that you're gonna to have to watch from your principal and you'll get it from your principal closer to school. So everybody's gonna to have to sort of pay attention because of course Erie View is different than Westview is different than Eastview is different than Redwood. They all have different doors and, and different, uh, you, know, you know, different floor plans, but it's all part of us getting together and keeping kids safe getting into school once they're in the classroom and then keeping them safe when we get them home. Great, thanks, Mr. Scott. And there has been a lot of uh, detail put into the cleaning procedures. Um, I'm not going to read through everything, but I do want you to know that hard surfaces, high touch areas, things will be cleaned regularly. Um, we also have a procedure in place where when kids, um, and again, at the elementary level at Troy, there's minimal kids moving rooms, a little bit more at Learwood. And obviously at the high school, there's each period kids switch classes, but we do have a um, electrostatic disinfectant mist that the teachers will spray in the rooms over each seat and so forth in between class time changes. That um, disinfectant it takes effect on contact and it comes to a complete dry within four minutes. So we've actually, one of the things we've done is we've extended the class time changes at Learwood and at the high school to allow um, some additional time. And it's actually a little bit more than what we originally showed on the schedule. Uh, we're still fine tuning the schedule. So I'll talk a little bit more about that um, soon, but th those things, those situations are going on. And the kindergarten and leaps rooms will be uh, clean between the AM and PM sessions. In addition, teachers will have a whole bunch of, um, you know, disinfectant spray, gloves, paper towel, those type of things available. And restrooms will be cleaned throughout the day. And um, we have all kinds of signage that's being put up. And then for food service, we're delivering lunches to kids um, for the most part K-8. And then um, having a, a reduce or a different way for kids to be able to get their lunches at the high school. There'll be a combination of hot items, cold items, prepackaged items, um, things that they're doing to reduce potential of contamination. And we have procedures in place for kids to wash their hands before an eating, uh, to clean their desks and so forth, or have the desk clean before they eat. And then there'll be a way that we're looking to, um, to do ordering so we have a better idea of exactly what it is the kids are ordering for lunch. Kids who are doing the online program can still receive a school lunch by coming to the high school. Okay, let me go back to... One of the things that we're doing is right now we have a nurse assigned between each two buildings well, we've hired additional nursing staff, and I believe, um, Tom, the number you gave me was, I believe there's 72 additional hours of nursing staff made available um, by hiring three additional individuals. Is that, did I hit that right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's probably a little more than that, but uh, you're exactly right. Basically, what we did is we had a nurse who covered two buildings prior, and they would split their five and three quarter hour day managing both those campuses. And just so everyone knows, we say eight campuses in the nurse world because we also have responsibilities uh, with St. Joseph's in Avon Lake. So that's how we get to eight. With what we did now is the team approaches, we're gonna have two nurses on each one of those teams. So we're actually doubling our nurse hours to two people uh, managing both those schools at five and three quarter hours is how it is. So we'll basically have bell to bell coverage available at every building and there'll no longer be a situation if one nurse is busy doing something at one school they're not free to go to the other school. Well, now we have somebody free to be at the other school. We also are um, looking at what we can do at the school level for daily health checks. 
we're not going to be taking temperatures. Temperatures are only a positive indicator in about 50% of coronavirus cases. Um, but we are also going to be working on a pledge that we're going to ask parents um, and students to be part of um, an Avon Lake pledge to um, help keep our health and safety in check. And that will be coming out before school starts. Any visitor that comes into the building, if and we have very minimal amounts of uh, visitors that will be allowed into the buildings beyond the office. Um, but if they were to have to go to beyond the office for any reason, they would have their temperatures checked as soon as they entered the main part of the building. Talked a little bit about the cleaning and sanitizing. I just wanna say that there are, Tom's department did a great job getting um, procedures in place and they're working on training custodians and we're gonna be working with the teachers on how to handle situations when things need addressed immediately. That's all part of what we're um, going to have in place so that we can keep things as clean as possible. Uh, masks, so the key takeaway for kids is we are making mask wearing age and developmentally appropriate. Um, our staff is wearing masks all the time. The only time they might not be wearing a mask is if they're working in a room or their own office and nobody else is in there. Um, they're able to remove their masks, you know, during that time. But obviously um, teachers, when they're teaching language or they're teaching something where the kids need to see their faces, they, the staff also has face shields. They'll be able to take their masks so the kids can see what they're saying, what they're um, doing, understand the sound movements. And students, I mean, elementary school students, when they're having reading instruction or they're having phonics instruction or something where they need to be heard or answered, they'll be obviously taught the correct way to take their masks off. There will be built-in frequent movement breaks, mask breaks for kids that will occur while they're social distancing. And we're also encouraging teachers to use outside spaces for instruction when possible and feasible that they can, then the kids can take their masks off as long as they're outside socially distanced. Um, same thing when they're out at recess. So we will be working with kids and staff to make sure everyone is on the same page. They're wearing their masks appropriately and encouraged to do so properly. We're not trying to, and we don't want to be the mask police. We want them to understand the importance and we want everyone to um, respect each other and provide as safe an environment as possible. We will have some videos out for parents to um, show them how to help your child adjust to wearing a mask for periods of time. Um, Julie Short, our district communications coordinator has some videos that um, she's going to be making available. And parents, we just need your support to help your child understand why we have this in place, how the um, how they can do it safely, understand that they're not going to be forced to keep their mask on from nine o'clock to 2.30, that there'll be opportunities to take them off. Um, but it's, you know, it's the same as when they go into stores or they go into public places. This is a, another expectation that we have for our students and staff. We also have and I'll show you where all of this is in a moment here. So we have a technology loan agreement that you can check out a Chromebook for your child for the year if you would like them to take it home. And this is on our district website. And I'm going to I can spell Avon Lake correctly. When you go to the home page, well, tomorrow, all of this will be gone. The back to school plan, the PowerPoint that we have is right here at the top. And then I'm going to ask them to move this information that's underneath Mr. Scott's picture that says back to school information. When you open this up, you'll have access to the online learning registration form, the Chromebook sign up form that I just showed you. Uh, transportation survey we're asking everyone to complete if you have a pre-k to eighth grade student that's uh, allowing us to help do our route planning and then the back to school form which is the power school update Jack, will there be a place where they can see this presentation if they want to view it again absolutely so if you go to 
um, the YouTube channel, if you type in, and I had to search to make sure I did this correctly, ALCast, and then also type in Avon Lake. Because if you just do ALCast, it takes you to some company that does something with aluminum. But um, yeah, if they go to the um, ALCast on YouTube, that will be there. And we'll include the links up there as well tomorrow for the videos. All three are up there. And actually, I was looking through the audiences. I was letting people in. Some of you are brave. This is your third session sitting through. So I appreciate you being here. Okay. So when we go, when we do questions, there's a couple ways you can submit questions now. Uh, one is the, I'm going to stop the screen share here. One is the chat function, which some of you have already found. You can send a chat to me through Zoom. Another option is that you can, um, on YouTube, and some of you found that as well, there's a chat, fu uh, chat function on YouTube. You can chat questions to me there. And if you don't, for some reason, have access to either one of those, uh, my email is available. It's um, jack.dbdibee at avonlakecityschools.org. But I prefer that you use the YouTube and the Zoom because they're the two that are right in front of me that I'll see right away. And with that, we'll go through and start with the questions. Uh, first question, are we able to drop or switch classes? Oh, never mind. It says retracted, but let's see. Is there any way online students can go to school to participate in classes that are harder to participate online, like orchestra, choir, and science labs, if they request beforehand to their teachers? So we're actually going to, we met with the choir directors, and I, I guess now's a good time to talk about um, choir. Obviously, we'll be having the classes. Right now, there won't be any performing. They have stricter guidelines in terms of how far people have to be distanced apart and we don't know when they'll be able to have performances but they will be having at least um practices and classes and so forth we have several music instructors band orchestra and the vocal that have requested to be online so we do have both the online and in-person covered for all three um all three of those at the high school middle school and even uh troy and elementary music is very well covered online um, and if for some reason, when you do the, the schedule change, if there was a particular request based on whether you decide to go online or in person, we've talked with the high school guidance counselors and, um, we will be much more lenient this year about schedule changes. I know in the past, the high school has been pretty strict on not allowing schedule changes after a certain date, uh, but, um, we have talked with them. We're having to make schedule changes because of the number of people that have asked to go online. So we believe students and parents should have the same opportunity to have their schedules changed within what we can do in terms of staffing and, and space and those type of issues. And Jack, why don't you go ahead and talk about extracurricular activities like marching band and that. You sure. know, and I wanna make sure that everybody understands that if there's like a fifth period orchestra class, an online student cannot come in person to that fifth period orchestra class. You're going to either have to do it online with your orchestra teacher or go ahead and come in person if you if you want to have that experience correct yes we will make the extracurriculars outside of the school day available to those online but during the school day you'll either be online or you'll be at um in at school in person uh, i already talked a little bit about the shortage of um testing uh, we, we know it's an issue and they're continuing to work on that. I wish I had a better answer for you. Unfortunately, testing is something that is out of our control, but I do know Mr. Scott meets weekly with Dave Cavell uh, on Friday mornings and um, the county superintendents get a lot of, bring a lot of their concerns and get a lot of information. And Mr. Scott's been great. I mean, when I've needed information for the plan or to answer a parent's question, He'll get out his phone and he'll text Dave Cavell and he'll have an answer to me within a couple of minutes. Unfortunately, the answer is usually, well, at this point in time, this is the best information we know. And as I said, everything is continuing to change. And, and I was texting with him this morning because like, uh, like uh, Becky Bush said, our RN, and they were discussing it today. They're going to be discussing it tomorrow. 
all the districts really in Lorain County, Cuyahoga County, the state are in the same position. You know, that piece of if we have a positive test, but the first thing we have to do if we have someone that has the symptoms, of course, we have to be able to get them to test. You know, just because that you have the symptoms, of course, doesn't mean that you necessarily just don't have a cold or the flu, you actually have COVID-19. So there's a lot of pieces and parts to it. David Covell is aware of that. Um, you know, the, the, the health department, state department are, are aware of that. And it's something that we're really gonna have to work on in the next month before we actually have kids in person at school. For the high school, how will you standardize grades across online and in-person classes, given that it's much easier for a student to cheat on a test at home if no one is watching the student? Well, that's a great question. A couple of things. First of all, the, um, the test sessions, a lot of the, them will still be done live so that the teachers are supervising them online. At the high school level, there are some teachers who will teach online and in person the same courses at different times during the day. For example, we have a, um, I was looking today, we have an AP government class that I was talking with a teacher and I think there's six sections of that class. So five might be at school, one might be completely online. So in that case, the teacher might be teaching the online and that would standardize um, the grading and the, um, the, the testing. How many sixth graders have chosen the online option? Uh, so I don't get the question for every grade. I will tell you that we are um, averaging maybe 30 per grade already, maybe more in a few grades. Um, it's been pretty even. However, the high school is slightly higher than all the other schools. Based on what we know today, if the city of Avon Lake, a school or even a classroom sees a spike in COVID, is there an action plan that the district is planning to implement? If so, are there different thresholds that warrant different action? So yes, um, it is possible that certain schools or even certain classrooms could be sent completely remote for whatever period of time we feel is needed to get the situation under control. And that would be in consultation with the health department. We do know if the county goes to purple, we would be 100% remote. Um, and then everything else in between is a possibility based on what the feedback Mr. Scott gets from the county health department and looking at trends and looking at all the data. But we do have, and I said that in the beginning, the important thing for everyone to understand is everyone could be, and quite honestly, likely will be at times during the year, short periods of time, maybe longer periods of time, potentially completely online. Um, if students are quarantining, yes. So if students are quarantined by the health department, they will be online for those 14 days they are not at school. The online remote teachers know that their enrollment may be subject to kids coming in for two weeks or longer periods of time based on if they're quarantined. Now, if a student's only absent from school for a couple of days, we would just have them do makeup work like they normally would now. But if they're going to be out of the, bu the building for a week or more, we would send them online. And Jack, part of the reason for that if, you know, is to, to sort of clarify is, you know, even if we're all in school all the time, if we've got two teachers teaching Algebra 1, their content is the same, their lesson plans might be the same, but classes vary where they are in a particular lesson and, and teachable moments, things going on, kids not getting stuff and teachers teaching. So those classes, even if they're both in the school at the same time, might not be at the same place on the same day. We know that we're gonna have those same variations between online and between regular classrooms in person. You know, we're gonna be working with the teachers to make sure that we stay close enough that we can adjust quickly, but we're positive there will be an adjustment if we're moving kids from in-person to online. But it's something that we're well aware of and we're working with the teachers with at this point. Okay, um, the next question is about attendance. How does online count students absent late? So basically online has online components that are live during the day. If the students are present for those, that's how their attendance would count, the same way as if they were physically present in the building. But I will tell everyone, we are going to be much um, more cognizant and 
encouraging people not to um, come to school if they are sick. If you are sick or you have symptoms and we've encouraged the staff the same thing, please, we will not be chasing after you for keeping kids home that are sick. Um, we don't need kids. We don't need staff at school that are sick. Not only does it spread germs, it also spreads a level of um, worry that people have. I don't, I don't know about you, but if I was in Myers the other day and somebody was coughing. It was like the first thing I noticed is, oh my gosh, this person is coughing. I'm running down to the next aisle. And then those are the types of things that you know, we don't want to um, make anyone feel uncomfortable. We just need people to be as safe as possible. Hi, Jack, my kids are elementary age. Can they be sent to school with face shields instead of masks? So right now, masks are primary, face shields are secondary. I will tell you on the whole mask situation, we're going to be watching numbers, trends, and recommendations. We're hoping that some of this will gradually be able to be back down a little bit when things get better and are consistent. We don't know what the future holds right now, but we feel this is the best that we can do to protect everyone right now. As new information comes out and things, we're, we're continuing to look at this and we're continuing to look at that everything. Can you tell us more about the online curriculum for elementary school? Sure. So the curriculum itself is the exact same curriculum that you'll use in the schools. We'll actually have times where if you're online before the year starts, you'll come to your home school and you'll pick up any of the textbooks, workbooks that we use. Um, we also right now have an online component to almost every program that we we have, uh, we have our math program, our elementary reading wonders program, they're all online. And we have something called single sign-on. Um, and what that basically is, is the kids will sign on to a screen, whether it's at school or at home, and it will have icons that are linked to any of the programs that are assigned to that school. And their Google Classrooms will be part of that. So the difference isn't really in the curriculum. It's just that they'll have, for example, at the elementary school, they'll have a, a morning session where they'll be with their teachers for maybe a half hour, 45 minutes. Then there'll be time where kids will be doing work on their own and the teachers may be pulling kids into a live Zoom for extra individual help. Then right before lunch, there'll probably be another short either activity or lesson, um, understanding that the kids are gonna get art, music and, and gym during the week as well. Um, and then there'll be some more additional time in the afternoon and the day will end with a, another a third whole group activity. All of what we're doing is grade level specific and age appropriate following the national standards. So kindergartners might have a total of an hour, an hour and 15 minutes during the day where they're online as a whole group broken into smaller segments and older students will have more time. They'll have time probably maybe every other day for each class or certain classes, certain days, others. And so that whole schedule is still being developed, but it, it's going to be following the national standards and age appropriate. Uh, masks are required to be worn on the school bus. And, you know, Jack, if I could add to that is if, if everybody will remember the bigger picture, you know, we know this is going to end at some point. And part of what Jack is talking about is even though delivery is different, the things that we do, the knowledge and skills that the kids are getting need to be close, whether they're in person or online, because our hope is that sometime during the year, we're going to come all back together at school and be in person together. You know, and we want to be able to meld those things and keep moving forward. The even bigger picture than that is we know that the springtime, we had students that developed gaps. We know that we will most likely have kids that develop gaps when we get back in the fall just because it's a new situation and what's going on. Again, as a school district, our ultimate goal is the same thing it's always been. You know, we know when kids graduate from here, they need certain knowledge and skills to be able to move off, whether it's to college or the workforce or, or, or into a trade, into a job or military. And, and our goal is, is when we get back that we need to be able to fill any gaps we have and keep moving forward so our kids graduate where they're supposed to be. And that's whether they're, they've got one year, or they've got 10 years. So it's very, very important to us and our teachers are very cognizant of it that we need to make sure we can do everything to get the kids the knowledge and skills they need right now. 
Great. Actually, the next uh, question has to do with mass breaks have been mentioned a few times. What specifically will that look like? How often? How long? So that's one of the things when we have um, that week before school starts, we're going to be having a whole grade and whole department uh, meetings um, on Tuesday, I believe, of that week. And that's one of the things we're going to be asked them to talk about is making sure there's specific um, times built in during the day. And we will be um, asking the teachers to make adjustments as needed based on how the students are reacting. So I don't want to tell you there's a specific every 45 minutes, there'll be a 15, uh, 10 minute break or whatever. It will be whenever there's an opportunity. So if they're going outside, when they go out to recess, um, any of those type of things, there'll be a whole class time where maybe they'll take their masks down and do a brain gym activity where the kids are moving around at their seats. We don't want them coming to school and sitting at their desk without movement, with their masks on from, again, nine o'clock to 2.30. That's not what we're trying to do. And so I can't give you a specific answer, but we're working and looking at it. It's going to be something that'll be fluid based on what the kids' needs are. Well, after Jack, school- Jack, we're gonna work with the teachers and do training on that also. Yes, yeah. And, and not just that piece of it, but also social emotional issues. Our counselors, Kristen Acton, uh, Lisa Goodwin, we're going to make sure that during that training time we do professional development and especially in those first weeks of school we're going to make sure the days are started that way and be aware of kids and make sure that we can cover those bases especially if we're seeing anxiety because of whether it's a mask or just being in school in person uh will there be after school programs such as boys and girls club still available yes that and the champions program will still be going on and they've submitted plans to Mr. Scott that we believe they'll be able to operate within our guidelines and do so safely. I'm gonna to jump to some YouTube questions. And Jack, before you move on to that one, cover okay. the fact that we will also have clubs and those things also after school. You know, they're gonna look differently than they have in the past, but you know, we'll have to make sure we cover all the bases that we have. But our intention right now is, is that you know, if we've got a math club or, or science club or key club, we're still going to do those activities, even though they're going to look different than they have in the past. We want to make sure that for the kids, for the kids that are coming, that, that we can still do that for them because it's an important part of school. Okay. Um, hello, 30 people watching on YouTube right now. The uh, I've, done, I've done a few of these questions. Let me go on. Hello for classrooms. Will all students in the classroom be one group or will they split up into smaller groups, pods like other schools have done? Um, so and I, I, I'm not 100% sure if this is an online question or if this is for in person. I guess I'll answer it both ways. Online, we're trying to keep the class sizes um, similar to what they are in the building so that the kids are still getting individual attention. I know sometimes you hear horror stories of kids who when they went to ECOT or go to other online programs were in classes of hundreds of students. No, our classes will be typical to what we have um, in, in person, both in person and online. And the in-person classes are being matched to the space available. So our, our classrooms, many of them will have smaller enrollment than they've had in the past. Some may have the same because they're in a much larger space. So all of that is being balanced out as we do the scheduling and um, look at each space. Is there, it's not a, a one simple answer because it's a little bit different for each for the different grade levels. Um, kindergarten classes, I'll tell you though that we're capping them at 16 and right now they're mostly 13 to 14 students each. How will study halls and lunches work at the high school? Those classrooms are already packed even during pre-COVID. Well, we're not using those classrooms that the study halls were in because those are huge classrooms and we're actually using them for teachers. We're doing um, a couple different things. We have uh, juniors and seniors who have late start early release where they can opt out of their high school. We're working on today, actually was talking with somebody from the high school. We're trying to reschedule kids who have um, early release so that their lunch will be right before their early release and they could actually leave at lunchtime. They, they would be leaving at 1239. They just get their courses in the morning. 
um, we're going to allow, well, I probably shouldn't say this, but we're looking at allowing um, if parents are able to bring kids or take them out earlier, early or late release, if they have a first period or a last period study hall, we're looking at possibly extending that beyond just juniors and seniors just to reduce the numbers in the building. But we are using the large competition gym. We're not packing the kids on bleachers. They'll be sitting every other bleacher spaced out. There are um, each section, I think, will be three per section of bench going all the way across. So uh, it, the gym will hold several hundred people that way. And um, we'll be working with the students on how to properly enter, exit, those type of things. All the study hall monitors will be zoned. So they'll have their same students that they normally would in classroom in a zone of the gym. And one of the biggest things that I, I'll just jump in and say right here is we really are going to need the kids' cooperation to make this work as well. We're going to go over the procedures with them, talk to them about how important it is they do these things, teach them to them, and we're going to need their cooperation to make this work. So this is, you know, one of the things where obviously anyone that has high school students at the house know that high school kids like to be independent and do what they want to do, but we're going to have to really ask them to follow these procedures to keep everyone safe. Um, senior projects, a great question. We weren't able to have it last year. I think that will just be on what's going on at the time. If you have an IEP Jack, and meet, oh, okay, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, Jack, that one's as much on the businesses as it is on the school. You know, of course, if we're all back in, we'll try to do everything we can for senior projects, but we also know that the companies and the businesses that we use they'll have rules and guidelines also. So you're exactly right. If that's gonna be a wait and see. Okay, great, thanks Mr. Scott. Um, if you have an IEP and need um, staff writing, how would this be addressed? So we're working next Tuesday, I actually have a meeting with uh, Dave Schindler, our Director of Pupil Services, Jamie Tischer, who's going to be running the online portion of um, special education and uh, Nicole Slavinsky, who's one of our um, special ed teachers, we're actually going to be going through and looking at who signed up. Actually, I think it's next Wednesday, not next Tuesday, but um, looking at who signed up that has an IEP and how we'll get their IEP needs met. So um, more specific information will be done on a student by student basis, but we will be working on providing related services um, to those students who are online. And the intention is that everybody gets those services and, and uh, you know, if Dave was online, we could have him talk. But the last couple of weeks, we've had some good practice in our extended year program that we're running at the high school right now. We've got about 20 kids with teachers and staff members, and it's going very well. But again, our intention is that, that all related services are done. And just like magic, there's Dave. <laughs> Look at, I am here, Mr. Scott. <laughs> Hi, was, Dave. I was hiding in the shadows, so... Um, so I can talk a little bit about in school and a little bit about online. So um, we know that every kid's uh, needs are individual and that's where we wanna start. We wanna start making sure that um, the way we ended school and the way we jumped into online learning um, may not have been optimal for all students. So I know that for the online component, a lot of work's been going on to make sure that there's live um, support daily. And that's gonna be our intention for students with IEPs. So if you have a student on an IEP, we know that they have individual needs. Um, we know that they're going to need um, support that's um, gonna be live support. And so one of the intentions is that, that we, we bump back to start of school. So in that week um, that teachers are back, we're gonna have some time to talk to all parents to make sure that um, you have a chance to talk about your child um, with the intervention specialist and, and just how, how those needs are gonna be met. Um, and to set up because some kids will be in a um, regular section for math, but they'll need math support. So how will that happen? Um, uh, and how will the two teachers work together? So Jamie Tischer is also going to um, be, be looking at that. If your student um, is attending on campus, um, one of the one of the things with our pullout services is that they were small group anyways. So kind of social distancing will be available. Um, for all of our um, 
in, in, in actually a lot of the classrooms, but in our intervention and resource rooms, um, we are going to utilize plexiglass barriers. Um, we are going to have um, the ability for um, uh, teachers to have some customized face shields because we know that to be a, the ability to see the mouth is something that's very important. And so we're looking to, and to um, um, especially if children are learning social skills or they have to learn some specific vowel patterns or they're getting speech and language. So we're trying to, we're doing all the best practices that have been, um, been put out by the experts and we're gonna have all that available um, for our kids too, so. Thanks, Dave. Thank you. Uh, thank you for all, okay. Can you tell me how many have enrolled in online learning? I think there's right now, there's about 320 last time I checked. There will not, okay, so, so will there be singing in choir? So they will have the opportunity to sing. They will not perform. Um, that will be in choir though. In the vocal music classes, most of them will not be able to have singing at the elementary level because they're being held in the regular classroom. So um, if this is a Learwood or a high school question, yes, they will be singing, but they will not be performing right now. Can you I tell me how, oh, go ahead. No, we're just working very diligently to make sure that that's done correctly. You know, with, with orchestra and band, it is, it is mostly just social distancing that we need to deal with and, and make sure we can do either smaller groups or be outside. You know, that was David Cavell's suggestion is, is band outside was a wonderful thing. Um, I think he told me that trombones were really the only issue. We're gonna have to find some kind of cover for those on, on the band side. But of course, you know, kids belting out and, and we have such a great choral program, pre-K to 12. You know, we all love to go to our concerts, whether it's winter, spring, fall, and the kids love to perform. It's gonna be a different world for a while. And, you know, we talked with Emilio Harufe and, and, uh, and Miss Pop yesterday morning, and we've got some really, really good ideas, but until we can get this situated out, it, it's gonna be different. And we're gonna give them some spaces where they can do some singing. But again, we know that they can't be closed because of the spittle and all those kinds of things. But you know, we're, we're again, working at this and, and we understand what we need to do. And, and we're gonna be very cautious at the beginning and make sure that we can work our way into it. Uh, can you tell me how many in kindergarten specifically? Um, yes, right now there's 30 signed up online for kindergarten. That's uh, 15 for each half day. For kindergarten and that's one area that I'm watching that if we need to add another section there if I get many more in kindergarten we might have a third half day section online in kindergarten um, and I'm watching every grade so uh, there's several other questions about who all the teachers are so I'll tell you I've just started I, I like like I said before a lot of this is numbers based and we still have until August 5th I've started at the elementary level offering positions to people. Um, kindergarten, Brenda Jones from Erie View is going to be doing our kindergarten right now. Ada O'Connor from Erie View is doing first grade. Second grade is Brooke Springer from Westview. Um, third grade, I haven't finalized yet. Fourth grade is uh, Laura Smith from, uh, I think she's Erie View as well. And then, um, I have some at the other grades. I'm, I'm not gonna announce those yet until I get more information. I probably, I know I'm gonna get this question, will not be able to tell you who all the online teachers are before August 5th, because at Troy and Learwood in the high school, I'm trying to balance um, subject area with teachers as well. So for example, uh, a sixth grader might have one teacher for reading and social studies, but a different teacher for math and science or at Learwood, I might have a math teacher teaching seventh and eighth grade math, obviously not at the same time. Um, but so I'm looking at all those pieces to try and keep what they do similar at school and online. What are the plans for curriculum in class? We'll be following our traditional curriculum. We'll be primarily technology based or more conventional. Well, conventional has become technology based in the world and education. There will be paper and pencil, but there'll also be a lot of technology. Um, we're actually at the point where some of the, as we're getting new curriculum materials, 
paper and pencil isn't even an option. Some of the programs that we get are strictly online. Um, for example, our um, some of our social studies programs that we use at third, fourth, uh, eighth, and one of the high school courses, they're completely online. And there's more of that. That's the trend in education. And part of that, Jack, is, is again, we're going to be very, very cautious, especially at the beginning. Uh, kids are not going to be able to share things. And going back and forth between the teachers and the kids or kids to kids, very, very careful with those kinds of things. Uh, you know, the, the days where you had four kids together facing each other and, and a pot of markers in the middle and you were working on stuff, that's not going to be able to happen when school starts. So, uh, like you said, there will be, you know, more conventional, more traditional paper and pencil things, but with a caution piece to it. Uh, you have all created two wonderful options for a terrible situation. Thank you so much for all your work. Uh, thank you for the comment. Um, and I'll just say that I get asked a lot, you know, what, what would you do? And I would say there's no one answer. We're presenting these opportunities for you to make a decision what works best for um, your family, your child, and, and your situation. Um, one of my kids is autistic and has some language challenges that would be exasperated with the mask. And so those are things right now, the, um, we would create that, that would be something that would be involved with the IEP team. If your child has an IEP that we will be looking at some of those issues and when it's appropriate and not inappropriate. Um, and then also has to do with medical excuses as well. So there, like I said, there are some extenuating circumstances that we're looking at. Um, if we start the year and don't feel comfortable, can we opt to virtual? So again, we will handle those on a case-by-case -case basis. A lot will determine on space and the situation and, and so forth. Um, so there's not a 100% guarantee and there's definitely not a, a, a definite no. We will look at those on a case-by-case. -case. Also, please talk about quarantine. If my child has to quarantine, will they have the same teacher and ability to view classes from their teacher? I know if the child is quarantined unless the whole class is quarantined, which I hope would not happen. If a class is quarantined, the whole class will go online with their teacher, assuming their teacher is not the one that's ill. Otherwise, they'll go with the online teacher for their grade level. They will not be able to view classes from their teacher. There will be some at the high school where the, we're using a swivel device where it only shows the teacher, not the students, so they may have an opportunity for that. Um, but yeah, we will not be doing um, live casting in all of the classrooms. Yes, so some of the live classes will be recorded so students can access them or complete them later. Um, and we'll be working with the online teachers and Dr. Coco on that. That's a request we've had several times, like uh, here's two working parents and they want to be able to review the supervision for the, the lessons. So I actually learned myself how easy it is to record things through Zoom or through Google Meets. And so we'll be making some of the, um, the teacher portions available online. Um, this is a question about how will online learning work for kindergartners with respect to skills that need to be evaluated non-electronically, such as handwriting. So. Um, a lot of that can also be done visually and through Zoom, but I will tell you that Brenda Jones told me to let people know if they had any specific questions about online kindergarten to email her and she would be happy to answer your questions or get in contact with you. So she's Brenda.Jones Brenda at AvonLakeCitySchools.org. Will they all be in the same online class? Is that part of that other question? Um, again, that will depend on how many are enrolled per grade level, if it's one class or two classes. When might LEAP start? And again, that is, um, we're going to be doing, kindergarten is going to be having orientation in small groups the first two days and starting the third day. Is LEAPS the same schedule, Mr. Scott, with that, or are they the following week? Do you know? I know LEAPS is still putting information together. Their guidance came out later than the schools did. 
and, and I don't want to say that necessarily that they're same as kindergarten because it's going to vary just a little, but uh, we, Jen Jackson, will get that out. You know, and again, we've talked with people about that and they're concerned a lot of this stuff comes out K to 12. And the reason for that is, is preschool has different rules than everybody else. And we're actually within the next couple of days, hoping that we get some guidance because that is one area that has not been very clear on exactly how we can set up rooms and how we can work with kids in that particular group. And, and as you know, kids that are three to five are real, real different than older kids are. So we'll get that out to you as soon as we can. Um, this is a great question. My senior is very aware of the in-school teachers for her current class schedule and has a great rapport with them. Um, well, the current class schedule is completely changing at the high school because we've had so many sign up for online. Teachers are probably not teaching what they thought they would be teaching in the spring. And um, so a lot of that's going to change. And we've also had several teachers from the high school that have requested to teach online, um, especially in two departments in particular. Um, so we're trying to grant those requests but the online teachers are being chosen based on those that have applied for it or those that have indicated they would be willing to do some online or some in person as well. So whatever teachers your child thinks they have is probably going to change regardless. Um, what is the temperature you will be canceling school in the building and moving to online school? So we're actually looking at two components. We're not just using air temperature, we're using actual temperature inside the building and inside classrooms. So we didn't put out a number because it might be 82 degrees outside, but 95 degrees inside of a classroom. So Mr. Scott will be making a decision each day by one o'clock and letting everyone know, and he promises to be very lenient. I do. Uh, I, might as, I might as well get this out of the way now, Jack. I got in trouble the other day because somebody asked would snow days be also online days? And I said, yes. And what I really meant to say was, if we know well ahead of time that it's a snow day, it'll be online. If I call it at five o'clock in the morning, it will only be a snow day. And he promises to be better with the heat days than he is with snow days. There were a few times last year, I was texting him at six o'clock in the morning. I'm like, really, we're going to school? <laughs> no, and, and with the heat days, and everybody knows this, you know, these classrooms at the elementary school and, and at Learwood, you know, we know what happens to them when it gets to be, you know, one, two, three o'clock in the afternoon. And in the past, we could move kids to other areas away from those west facing classrooms that would really get hot. You know, we had places that were air conditioned we can go to or outside to get a breeze in those things. And even though it might be uncomfortable for an hour or so, we could still get a day in school in and have good school in the morning. We know because of the social distancing and changing the configurations of our schools, we're not gonna have those opportunities. So, you know, part of this is also practice for our teachers that if we ever need to go online all the time, we're gonna be able to practice and get ready for that. So we, we are gonna make those calls and we are gonna be very lenient. Uh, where can the registration for remote learning be found? If you go to the Avon Lake City Schools website, and click on back to school news. It's the first one on the calendar um, underneath the red banner, underneath Mr. Scott's picture. The link to that is there. Um, if our, what happens if our county goes to red or purple? If it goes to purple, we would most likely be closed. There's still a discussion what happens if we go to red. Um, are in-school teachers being trained and prepped to handle a closure? Yes, we're actually doing Starting next week, our teachers have, um, and this is the second part of your question, Megan, our virtual teachers being trained in virtual teaching best practices. We're training all of our teachers in online and technology and all the things related to it. Starting next week, we are offering 23 different sessions for our staff that they're able to choose from that best fit their needs from technology to Google Classrooms to Screencastify to social emotional issues. Uh, we have the whole gambit going. And then we're also doing um, a week of training and planning collaboration the week before school starts August 20, that whole week of August 24th. What platform will online schooling use? Well, first of all, we'll be using Google Classroom K-12 at school and online. 
And then the teachers, our primary will be Google Meets, but many of them also will be using Zoom. Those are the two that we're doing for live instruction. Specifically asking for elementary grades, where, oh wait, that's, that must be the second part of the question there, Kyle. Let me see if I can find your first part. Uh, yes, so that, I think I answered your first part of your question for elementary grades. Uh, let's see, where was I? Will standardized testing take place? MAPS testing will take place at least in the fall. State testing, Mr. Scott, it's all yours to talk about. Yeah, Jack, I thought you would just keep talking over me so I wouldn't get on my soapbox. Um, <laughs> we're, we're, we're working with the state right now. I mean, you know, we've got a superintendent's group and, and we are really adamant that that is not something that should be on our teachers and kids plate. Uh, it did not happen before the legislature went on vacation over the summer and they don't come back in until September. But when they come back in September, we will be on the door of the Capitol and we will be saying, this is something our kids don't need to do this year. There's too much other stuff to deal with. All right, I'm gonna to jump to some YouTube questions and I'll jump back to Zoom questions. Will you have updated supply lists on the website? I know several of the schools have already updated their lists. Um, the principals come back on Monday and um, we'll hopefully before the week's out, you'll have all the updated supply lists. But I've seen this question a few times, so I'll, I'm, I'll remind them to make sure those get up there if they're not already. I don't think they change much from year to year. So I think some general supplies, I think you're safe in getting um, next question, would a child taking classes on campus be shipped from elementary schools to another one? No, we, we wouldn't make kids attend schools at more than one school. We would certainly allow, though, if a parent requests for their child to attend a school out of zone for a specific reason this year and they're willing to provide transportation, we certainly could look at that and we'd be happy to if space um, allowed to allow you to do that if it worked out better for transportation or daycare or something to that effect. And Jack, we, do have a couple of eighth, we do have a couple of eighth graders that go to the high school for classes and we'll still be doing that. Yeah, this was an elementary school question. Yeah. It's better. Okay. What would an online day at the high school look like? So they would have scheduled times um, based on each course and what the teacher sets up where they have live Zooms throughout the week. And then they would have times where they might not have every class every day live. They would have some days where they would be doing things on demand or doing things independently, but they would um, certainly have times where they were expected to be online during the school day throughout the day. Okay, I'm gonna go back to Zoom. Will we get a letter like the lice letter that says a kid in your class has head lice for suspected COVID? or only positive COVID tests. Um, I know for sure, well, I shouldn't say for sure because everything changes. I know the plan is for positive COVID tests. I think the health department is working on getting the letters standardized and the procedures standardized across the county. And Becky Bush, um, our school nurses, again, will be in another meeting. Mr. Scott's been in meetings and we're getting more information all the time. Will teachers be present the whole day for online learning? So again, there will be periods of time where they're doing whole group. There'll be times where they'll be available to work with kids individually or in small groups. And then if this is a secondary question, Robin, that will depend on when they're teaching other courses online. So it would be similar to what they do at the high school now. They might be teaching an algebra one at 9.15 and then they might be teaching in geometry at 10 o'clock. So they might not be free again until 1045 or something to that effect. Um, do we have a threshold number for when we go to virtual? Again, that's um, you know something that's still being looked at all the different criteria. Uh, Tom, I'm gonna let you handle this question. Are there specific procedures and testing protocol that have been developed for the food service staff preparing food for the district? 
Not that I could say out of the ordinary or anything special. Uh, Andrea, like the principals, comes back on Monday, and we've worked uh, a little remotely in getting the resource guide put together with her. But uh, a lot of what we've done since uh, COVID came out, I think it was St. Patrick's Day when we started doing the grab and go lunch program. A lot of those things uh, will be similar. Our goal is obviously to have more variety and uh, those types of things when it comes to the delivered lunches to the classrooms or those who are picking them up from the high school. So as we get closer, some of those things uh, will be addressed, I'm sure, but nothing out of the ordinary that I can think of. I mean, allergies are a big piece. We'll obviously be pay paying attention to those. Our kitchens uh, across the district obviously don't uh, deal with nuts and some of those types of pieces. Um, but uh, as far as I know, you know, we follow the same protocols pretty much every day with preparation of food for, for the kids and the amounts that we make each day. Um, if there are 30 kids signed up in online for sixth grade, will all those kids be in one online cohort? Yes. Uh, I mean, is there a cap for online class for Troy? 30 is a lot. Again, we'll keep the class sizes similar to what they are in the building. Um, but we're, you know, we'll either have one or two cohorts for each grade level K-8. We will be offering plus classes um, online as well for those of you asking for the... Um, for Troy, I see that question there too. Would kids switch teachers if they go from online in the first semester to in-person the second? Uh, most likely because if the teacher is still teaching online and they go in-person, they would be switching to an in-person teacher. Uh, how will supplies for art classes be dealt with? And that again, we'll be having the opportunity for students to pick up supplies at the beginning of the year. And then if there's additional supplies needed during the year, we would have times where somebody could go to the office and pick up the supplies, but we'll make sure that, you know, anything that um, art supplies are part of the school fees. So you would still get the art supplies that are needed for the art classes. Uh, this is a question. We're going to have to look at this one. If students attend open door, are they allowed to store instruments in the building? Um, we'll, we'll have to check with open door on that. Chromebooks are available to students in any grades, whether they're in person or online. With the recent increase in cases, is there a chance of school being shut down for the first nine weeks? Again, anything is possible. Um, nothing has been said or decided, but I know that we're just continuing to look and to watch the numbers each week and, and Mr. Scott's continuing to get guidance. Um, how would IEPs be met for a child in the first grade with online learning? We will have um, some intervention specialists who will be working online with kids as well. I think I answered this one, but let's see. Oh, that was at 713. Um, yes, students can wear face shields, but masks are primary. They could wear them secondary if they wanted to wear both. How will art classes be handled at open door? Will the teacher have to bring all the necessary supplies, tools to the building? Yes, all of the essential classes will be handled, will be at open door. The kids will not be going to Learwood if they're there. Are we having new math curriculum this year? Um, it's not, it's updated. There's a, it's still the Envisions math program um, that we're using at K-8, but there are, um, it's an update, it's a called Envisions 2020, and for two grades, they actually call it 2021. What are the expectations for parents with online learning? I know there are guidelines you need to meet and that live classroom are to meet and take some of the pressure off of parents, but I'm concerned with homes with multiple children being able to participate in live class simultaneously on such a rigid schedule and be able to concentrate, especially when parents may be working from home or have younger kids so again, we're not expecting the parents to do the instruction online. We're asking just like we would for support when kids are doing independent work or doing um, homework, those type of things. So basically look at the, the classes that they're doing online, the teachers providing the instruction during that period of time. The independent work doesn't necessarily have to be done at a set time, it can be done as long, like we do at school, as long as it's done by the next day. Those are the type of things we'd be looking at. Aha, I know I heard in a previous session about uh, school messenger being a primary method of communication. So how does a parent sign up for messenger? 
okay, when you go to do your back to school forms, it will, um, I'm just looking, my cell phone heard me say okay, and it thinks it said okay, Google, for some reason, so it's typing what I'm saying. But um, when you go to do your back to school forms, there is a thing that asks you if you are allowing the school to send you notifications, communication. Unless you say no, you're signed up for Messenger. But if you have not received emails that Mr. Scott and I have been sending out in the last couple of weeks, I believe there's been three of them, then your Messenger is not active. So I would call or email Teresa Martin, who's the district registrar for contact information on the registration page of our website. And she can actually look in PowerSchool and make sure you're marked correctly. And if you haven't updated your, your stuff yet, please go in and update it. That would also make Teresa very happy. I think, Jack, we're what, at about 80%? We are. 89%. 89%. Oh, 89%? All right. Yeah, I talked I talk to her later today. That's awesome. Thank you, parents, for doing that. Uh, yes, masks will be provided if kids forget a mask or if they need one. If kids are online and they get bored and lonely, will teachers be expected to build in collaboration between students? Absolutely, there will be a um, lot of activities that we'll be encouraging the teachers to work with so the kids can build friendships, they can have activities to work together. One of the cool things about Zoom is there's actually something called breakout rooms. So you could actually work in a small group in a breakout room live on Zoom and, and kids would be able to do some activities that way. What does the district as a whole prefer parents choose online or in school? We have no preference. We want you to choose what you feel is best for your child, your family, and your situation. Um, will you guarantee you will keep the mask requirement for the whole first semester? Uh, I'm assuming this is a concern that if we were to drop the mask requirement, there's a concern about safety. Um, I guess I'll say we can't, I can't guarantee anything right now. I don't know what the situation will be like in the future. But right now, given the situation, our intention is to keep the mask requirement. How will plus classes work online? Will they still get their own class or mixed in with typical kids? They, we will have plus classes separately for math and ELA. Will fifth grade do band this year with instruments? Yes, like I said, we have a band teacher who's going to be fully online that will work with 512 students. We have an orchestra teacher who's going to be online and we have a uh, music teacher who will be online. When will we learn the Troy and Learwood teachers? Will they teachers teach subjects they have experience in for online? Um, they will teach subjects that they are certified to teach. They may not be exactly all the same subjects they taught last year, but many of the times they will. I'm going to be discussing with them as I offer the positions, um, what their comfort level is and balancing that they might not be teaching the exact same grade. For example, I might have a math teacher teaching seventh and eighth grade math, obviously at different times, um, maybe a fifth grade, sixth grade, and then the two plus classes separately. SOAR will be available for online students. We will have an online SOAR class. I understand the role of technology in class. My concern was more of if the in-school curriculum was basically completing the, uh, no, the in-school curriculum is not the same as, the curriculum is the same, the delivery is different. So if kids go to school, they're not just going to be basically sitting in front of a computer doing what they could have been doing at home online. I, I see your question, Kyle. Sorry if I didn't answer that correctly or clearly before. All right, that's a repeat, that's a repeat. Yes, for orientation for Troy Learwood High School, we will have some sort of modified orientation. The principals are still working on that. Um, I can't remember if it's August 14th or August 17th now, but on one of those two days, I've asked all the principals in the district to send out a general messenger message to all of their parents with all of their school specific information for our orientations, our open houses that will be modified, any of this drop off pickup procedures. So the whole district will go out on the same day and you'll have all that information well before school starts. We talked about heat days. Has Mur Murples, the high school acapella group been discussed? 
Mr. Scott and I met with um, Mr. Rufe and um, Courtney from over at Learwood with the principals there. And again, we are going to allow people to practice, but height, the music, they have to be separated uh, so far apart that there will not be any performing going on right now. Um, yes, heat days will be for the buildings that don't have air conditioning plus open door kids. If Learwood's off, open door will also be off. Recess and gym be a part of online and in-person schooling. Um, in person, there'll be recess elementary. There will not be scheduled recess at Troy, but teachers will still be able to take their kids out. But at Troy, they used to do it in large numbers of kids at the same time. Um, gym will be online K-12. Recess will not, it won't be a recess, but there'll be breaks throughout the, the day at elementary. Jack, where do we find the student number required for registration? Um, that is your student number that's in PowerSchool. So if you go to PowerSchool or if you look on any of their report cards from this year, we put the student numbers, that's their ID number. A lot of times your, your kids may know it. Um, if you don't know it, feel free to email Teresa Martin and she can send it back to you. How art supplies be handled and sanitized. Um, th that'll be one of the responsibilities of the art teachers and making sure kids are wiping down materials after they're um, being used. We will not be having kids share their own personal supplies. Will the supply no, list- Jack, and, Go ahead. And, and that's gonna be the same thing in a number of classes like science lab classes. We're gonna be working on those processes with the teachers and with Mr. Baroni to make sure that any of those things that, that kids are gonna to have to share, like lab equipment, we're gonna be able to clean them before another student has to use them. Okay, let's uh, continue. I think it is also an important to know who our child's teachers are. It seems like there are a ton of changes at ear review. Um, this creates so much uncertainty to make an informed decision. Again, this is a chicken and the egg situation. We don't know who's teaching what, how many sections at each grade in the physical buildings till we see how many sign up for online. Um, is there a set threat? Okay, we already answered that. And then this question, I don't know if this is the same question, I just saw it on YouTube that was asked um, on Zoom about last year. Uh, where did that go? Last year, my kids used to get picked up from home and dropped up at home. We're 0 0.9 miles away from our school. Are we going to be assigned a bus this year or what? Right now, you would not be assigned a bus. After we go through and look at the one mile, it's possible there will be some changes made. Um, but right now, we're using one mile as the cutoff. Um, by the way, the state requirement is two miles or further. So in Avon Lake, we uh, bus many more students than um, we're required to. So we um, you know, are, are doing everything we can to bus as many students as we can. This one just says, can you address this? But it doesn't say what this is. Oh, never mind. It's did the other question I just addressed on the teachers. How many first and third graders have signed up for virtual? Um, I, I Like I said, probably, I mean, it's going to change because I've been getting 20 to 30 new signups across the district each day. Um, but right now I know there's enough that we're gonna definitely not have um, like any grades combined. We won't have like a first, second grade combined or a third, fourth. They'll be at the elementary level. There'll be at least one section of each grade. Supply list, I already talked about that. Uh... And Jack, with things like the supply list, that's, those are part of the things that over the next month, we really need to have the parents watch and look at individual buildings. You know, as the teachers are working and the principals are working together on curriculum and what they need, we're hoping to be able to get more specific on exactly what can be brought in as far as, as those things go. Again, like I said before, the days of, you know, everybody bringing in a, a white glue bottle and putting them in a basket and everybody just grabs them and uses them when they can, those days are, are gonna be over for a while. So we'll have to be careful. So, you know, the those lists will come out and they might look differently than they are right now, but it's something we're gonna to have to watch over the next two or three weeks and it'll come from your building. 
Last year, it was confusing as a parent to understand where all my different kids were supposed to be when, what is different, all homework in one place. Okay, so um, Chris, what we're doing is we're using Google Classroom K-12 to for the teachers to house where everything goes. Now, that doesn't mean they're not using other programs, but links to those programs will be available through single sign-on or through the Google Classroom so that you can have information all in one central place. That's one of the things that I've heard from other um, other parents last year last year in the spring, and that's kind of why we went to the standard platform. So hopefully that will be a lot better this year. Um, I'm gonna jump to a couple last YouTube questions, and um, that was the last Zoom question. So if there's anyone else that has a question, feel free to get that in now before we get close to wrapping up. Um, supply kits ordered will be available for pickup at the schools. Um, they're based on whatever the supply kit for each school, what they requested. And I think I know that, I think I remember um, Cheryl telling me that Redwoods are in already. So you'll be receiving information with that August email. Is PSAT still scheduled for juniors and how would this work for virtual students? It is still scheduled, but um, I know on some of the news flashes I, I get, I saw that some testing has just randomly been canceled at the last minute. So if there may be times where the kids who are online, if they need to take a PSAT test or an AC or something like that, they would be allowed to come into the building and we would assign them a space um, where they're not you know, co-mingling and all that so that they could still take those tests. There's no special testing needed prior to the start of the new school year. Um, thanks for the nice comment. Um, are lockers going to be used? Uh, no, we are not. Right now, we are not using lockers across the district. We're looking at ways to um, work with the kids and their schedules so that they wouldn't need all their materials every day. Small group interventions, study halls will still be offered at the high school, yes. And let me go, ah, will there be training for parents on K-12 Google Classroom? I have four kids at ALCS and don't know how to use it. Great question. We are going to, the week before school starts, we will have a whole section of seven different courses for parents they can do on demand. Um, we're gonna have a PowerSchool Basics. We're gonna have one on single sign-on, Google Classroom, social emotional health, um, and anyways, the, there's a variety of those and they will be available and I'll be sending out information on that. So you'll be able to learn all about the K-12 Google Classroom. Will online high school students follow a block schedule too? Uh, again, that is going to be determined on how we staff and the courses and the numbers. So it's basically you would at a minimum you would have activities to do that are signed a set, I'm trying to say this correctly, signed live times with your teachers throughout the week. And then you would have time that you'd work on your own. With online, there's a little bit more flexibility as to when you do your work, as long as you have it done before the next class session. Oh, thank you for this question, Mark. Other than encouraging our kids to follow the pledge rules, is there anything parents can do to help the teachers and staff? Um, I would just say, continue to support what we're doing at school, at home. Feel free to let us know when there are concerns or ideas or suggestions. We are certainly open to those. This is just a whole new territory for all of us. Things are changing and we wanna make this the best that we can for everyone. Um, kindergarten screening, we're not having separate kindergarten screening. We'll be doing some um, uh, I'm trying to think, of, I can't even think of what it's called now all of a sudden. Um, KRA, we'll be doing that starting the week of September 14th. We'll be doing some other basic screenings within the school day, but we will not be doing the traditional May screenings. Uh, yes, Erie View will have a chance to meet the new principal and the high school will have a chance as well. All right, I'm gonna jump to YouTube really quick. A uh, question on midterm exams. At the high school, um, I don't know, Dece December seems like a long way off. So um, don't know what to tell you because 
that that's that, everything. The, the intention is, is at this point, those would happen. But again, it's a long way off. And that's one of those things that depending on how things are going could be altered. Okay, great. All right. Oh, thank you. Huge thanks to Dr. DB for everything you have done for the kids and parents. You are awesome. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Um, I, I want to say thank you to everyone. I mean, this is, you know, my job has been to kind of put this together, but Tom and his department have done an amazing job. The principals, Mr. Scott, Becky Bush, our nurse, our Sue Cole, our transportation supervisor, and so, I mean, there have been so many people involved in this. Um, I've just kind of been throwing it all together, but everyone has, this has just been a huge team effort. Parents, I want you to know, I read every single one of the comments on those 1300 surveys that I received earlier. I, many of you know, I've been responding to emails. Mr. Scott's been responding to emails. We are looking at everything that you send us. Um, our Board of Education has been fantastic. They've been sharing comments and things that they've heard. So this has just been a huge team effort. And I'm really proud of um, Avon Lake community, our school district, our staff. I've had kids emailing me questions, parents, uh, some of the high school kids. And um, it's, you know, we're not, I know we're not going to make everyone happy. I know we're not going to let everybody have everything they want, but we're going to do the best that we can to provide the best education we can for everyone, whether it's um, in person, online. And I'll just tell you that I can promise you there's going to be hiccups along the way. And I can promise you it's going to change 30 or 40 times, maybe by tomorrow, who knows, but um, oh, Mr. Scott, are you, are you speaking you? about the governor's news tomorrow? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a little nervous. I, if, if all yeah. of you could see all the texts I've had on my cell phone today from um, people in my role in other districts, we're all a little worried about what's going to be said tomorrow. Um, but knowing that it's possible he might just say more is coming in the future, but we'll go from there. Mr. Scott, I'll turn it over to you. You know, thank you, Jack, for everything you've done. It really has been a team effort. You know, we've been working on this really since March. Uh, we've got a good plan in place. Uh, you know, when the parent earlier on the question asked, what could they do? You know, it goes back to that piece that, that it is gonna be very fluid. We're gonna be down in areas that we haven't had to handle before, but you know, I know we can do it if we do it together. Uh, you know, if we look at positive ways to get through this and how to move every day, we're gonna get through this crisis and come out stronger on the other side. So I do appreciate everything my staff has done. Uh, I do want to give a shout out to the school board uh, and and uh, you know also uh, you know our treasurer Miss Reed because um, <laughs> we looked at them we we looked at them everybody and said to do this right we're going to have to spend some money and, and whether it's on PPE or whether it's on staffing if we need to do that in order to get the social distancing right. And everybody nodded their head yes and, and gave me and gave Jack and gave Tom the, the green light that if it's going to make kids safer and it's going to be able to help us educate kids better during this crisis, then we need to do it. And that really is the Avon Lake, the Avon Lake way. And we're going to keep working hard at it. We're, we're, you know, we, are, we are dedicated to make this year happen and, and to keep everybody safe and, and move on through. So. Thank you for being with us. Again, Jack, thank you. Staff, thank you. Uh, have a good week and stay safe. All right. And thank you to everyone who participated through Zoom or YouTube and have a great day.